to me. RNG, for those of you who may not know the term, means random number generator, or some people will refer to it as the random number gods, as a bit of a joke. Um, I am using a random, uh, a list of, uh, blah, 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 a list randomizer to determine what games I'm going to play today. I'm gonna shoot this in the middle like I did last time, right here. Um, and Battleship went out, so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna probably play two or three games a day, depending on how much time I have, and, uh, the top two or three games on that list are the ones that I'm going to be playing. So, I think that works out for, for right now, because there's some, I don't like where this is going. Um, there's some games that I'm kind of avoiding, because I don't, they've gotten a little too difficult for me. Um, just because I like playing video games doesn't mean I'm good at them. Uh, so I think this is a good way to give all of the games equal chance to, to be played. And I'm apparently not sticking to a standard... I hope I used my cruiser special. I don't know. I think this was my cruiser special over here. Um, yeah. So anyways, there's... I don't think I'm going to be sticking to a standard format on my channel until I get the number of games that I'm playing down to a manageable size. I know it was m my idea to jump up to having 13 games on my channel at once. So... That's what happens when I do that. Uh, I didn't figure in whether or not I was going to be consistently good at the games or whether or not the games are going to wear me out. Because a lot of the games that I'm playing aren't games that I unnecessarily even know uh, how to play very well. Uh, that's the nature of doing requests, really? You expect one of my ships to be there? Um, but not all of my games are requests. Some of the games are just games I started playing one day and recorded them, and then got myself into a position where I uh, had dedicated myself to playing it because I put the video on YouTube. <laughs> so, that's what we're going with. So right now, I have hit absolutely none of his ships, and he's sunk one of my ships. So this is uh, starting off pretty well, I must say. Hit another one, I dare you. Aha! Uh -huh. Um, so yeah, um, random number generator. Uh, eventually, I'm going to get to where I'm probably going to play either one system a day, or two or three games every day of the week. So if there's a particular way that you'd like to see the games, um, I'm completely up for bias, too. If you are biased towards one system or one game, comment on it. Um, remind me of it, because I do get my comments in an email, and the more comments I get on a game or, or a video, the more inclined I am to play that particular game. Um, because um, my YouTube channel, I want to be as viewer-centric as possible. Uh, and speaking of being viewer-centric, I think I just recently re reached 100 subscribers. I don't think I'm going to win this one. What do you think? Let's shoot right here. Oh, of course. Ba -ba -da uh, so yeah. Good job there, sinking three of my ships. So I don't think this is going to be the best battle. I might have to do this battle over again, but since I'm doing two battles per video, I think that's fine. And I missed it somehow. Not paying attention very much to the game. Um, also, do you think it would be better for me to randomize the system I play each day? and just play all the games that I'm playing on that system, or or should each game have an equal opportunity? Uh, I'm leaning towards each game, because there are a few games that I'm very close to beating, and I've been avoiding them. Because I'm not very good at them, I think I mentioned that already. So, let's take a 180 here, and let's talk about awesome 90s rock bands, because uh, I have a friend who's from the 90s, <laughs> and at least that's what he says. Um, and we got into a discussion about 90s music a couple of days ago, or, or yesterday, and I really liked talking about it, so I wanted to know what are some of your favorite 90s rock bands. Um, as you've seen in a couple of these videos, I've mentioned the Smashing Pumpkins, so Smashing Pumpkins are probably my, in my top five if they're not one of my favorite 90s rock bands. And I think Billy Corgan's an awesome singer. I'm not gonna find his ships in time to sink them and him not sink all my ships. Um, let's see, some other bands that I listened to in the 90s. I listened to Green Day, emphasis on 90s Green Day. I liked their first three or four albums. Um, uh, da, da, da. My brother had the album Dookie, and we both split the cost of the album Insomnia, or Insomniac, I'm not sure what it was, and we played that CD out. That CD was awesome. And there was another CD that came before Dookie, I can't remember what it was called. It was pretty good. I think it was a demo of sorts. It had some of the same songs that Dookie had on it. And then the CD that came after Dookie was, I mean, Insomnia was Nimrod, I think? Um... I'm not sure, but the one that came right after Insomniac had pretty good songs on it, and then everything after that I didn't like or didn't listen to. It got too uh, whiny slash political for me, and I don't like either of those types of things. This coming from the person who likes Billy Corgan. 
I must emphasize whiny lyrics, not whiny singing. Billy Corgan has a whiny voice, but he doesn't necessarily whine in his music. I, I don't consider what he's doing whining. Or if he's doing it, if he's whining, he's doing it with, with uh, uh, tolerable lyrics. Hmm. Other bands. and I, oh, well, The Smashing Pumpkins, the CDs that I liked were uh, Twilight and Starlight and Dusk to Dawn from uh, Millie Colony and the Infinite Sadness 2 CD pack. I listened to a lot of their other music, but that was the one that really got me into Smashing Pumpkins. I didn't really listen to their earlier music before that one. That was actually the first album I ever bought with my own money. And it cost $22 when I bought it on CD. That's how young I am. Uh, let's see, who else did I like? Uh, I don't know. Uh, I like Beck. Beck is from the 90s, and uh, his music uh, started becoming famous in the 90s, but I didn't really listen to him much in the 90s. Uh, I liked Bjork in the 90s. Um, I liked Our Lady of Peace for a little while. Uh, some of their older stuff, like uh, Happiness is Not a Fish, and stuff around that era. I didn't really like any of the stuff around the... Uh, Vertigo, uh, the Vertigo album, anything there and beyond. I think it was called Vertigo. Or one of the songs was called Vertigo. Something, Gravity, I don't know. Something like that. I found a battleship. I might win this. Maybe, maybe not. Um, let's see. No, probably not. Unless I can keep him searching long enough for my submarine to find his other three ships. Uh, so let's see. The kind of music that really made me start uh, seeking out and finding music and wanting to know more about it was when I started listening to Aphex Twin. And Aphex Twin, I started listening to Aphex Twin after I listened to Prodigy, and I started listening to Prodigy after I listened to the Chemical Brothers. Uh, so let's see, I got into the Chemical Brothers, and that was the first electronic band that I really liked. They, uh, pretty much everything after that, well, my primary focus after listening to the Chemical Brothers was finding new and awesome um, electronic music. So I went from the Chemical Brothers to uh, Prodigy and the Crystal Method and stuff like that. And... <clears throat> My first Chemical Brothers album was the uh, was Dig Your Own Hole, which I still maintain is one of their top two albums, if not their best album. And let's see, The Crystal Method was Vegas. I didn't really like anything after that until Legion of Boom, which I haven't listened to enough. Uh, it really sounds like the proper sequel to Vegas, in my opinion. And uh, Prodigy, the album I liked most by them, was probably... Uh, it was probably tied between the Prodigy experience and Music for the Jilted Generation. I listen to music for the Jilted Generation more, so if by uh, if you determine the greatness of the album by how many times it's played in your record or tape player or whatever, your iPod, I don't know what people listen to music on anymore. I listen to music on the computer. Uh, then music for the Jilted Generation was definitely my favorite Prodigy album as far as how many times I listened to it. I probably have listened to that album over two or three hundred times in my life because I used to listen to it every day at work, uh, all the way through every day that I worked. I think I worked three or four days out of the week at that point in time. But neither of those was my first Prodigy album. My first Prodigy album was Fat of the Land. And I didn't even like uh, Breakbeats until I started listening to the first two Prodigy albums. And I still maintain that I don't like Breakbeats. But I like Prodigy's Breakbeats. Uh, let's see, after Prodigy... I had a friend who liked to find really shocking and out there music. And sometimes he would pick the music or the album based on the, the cover of the album. And one of the albums that he bought just because it had a shocking cover wasn't even an album, actually. It was a single. It was called... Window Liquor by a guy named Apex Twin. And the cover of the album had a picture of a lady wearing a bikini, but the lady had a gremlin-type face. It looked like she was wearing a mask or a photoshopped version of some man's head. Anyway, she looked more manly in the face than, than in the body. And he saw it, and he thought it was the most hilarious album cover he'd ever seen. So he bought it, and he had never listened to that kind of music either. But he stuck it into his, his CD player, which, uh, in his car at the time, he had a, a system. I had two tens or something like that in his car that sounded like twelves. And he stuck it in his car, and the, the first song that came on was the song Window Liquor. And that song was absolutely crazy. Neither of us had ever heard anything like it. Uh, he had heard it once before he played it for me. So he had a chance to listen to it. It only had three songs on it. And he listened to the album, and he instantly knew that I would like it. Uh, because he saw that I was progressing slowly into the more intelligent type of electronic music. Okay, let's see. I have the four and the five and the three, so I need the two and the sub, obviously. So let's try up here. No. Hopefully you won't find my sub. And that would be just great. Um... So anyways, I'd never heard anything like that before, and it made me think, well, if there's something like this, if somebody's actually publishing this kind of music, I have to find out more about this record, uh, record company, uh, studio, whatever you want to call it. And I found out that it was the Warp Record label. So him and I both found some other albums by Apex Twin, but I, I could inst uh, pretty much instantly tell that there was a specific uh, sound in his music that I liked more than his music as a whole. There were certain effects that he was using on the synthesizers uh, and the computer programs he was using to make his music that I liked more than the songs as a whole, even though most of his songs were pretty good throughout. I could tell that it was the sounds more than the music that I was enjoying. So I found a, I found other music on that record label. Um, first, 
I went to the store and I said, okay, well, I'm going to find somebody else who's on the Warp Record label. And I, I found uh, the Apex Twin record on the shelf and looked on the back of it. It said Warp. That's how I knew that it was from the Warp Record label. Um, so I looked around on the shelf near Apex Twin, and the first thing next to Apex Twin from the Warp Record label was a band called All Tucker. So I said, hmm, that's interesting. Well, which album should I get? There was about three or four, and one of them was only $11, and it was a two-CD pack. So I said, okay, $11 for two CDs, that's basically five and a half dollars per CD. I think that's a pretty good deal. So I'm going to buy that. And it was the album... Did I... Did I just win? One, two... What? How did, how did I win that? That is awesome! That is so awesome! 